Hi, I'm Allison from MaxWeb, and today we have Sean Hall, Director of Demand Advertising Partnerships at Rev Content, joining us. Today, we're going to be talking about RVSLs and why they work so well with native traffic. Native is one of our highest volume traffic sources. Plenty of affiliates are converting and profitable on native. And if you're running native, you're likely running a Rev Content. If you're looking to run a Rev Content or need any help getting your Rev Content campaigns launched, you can hit up Sean or your AM at MaxWeb and we can get you set up. Thank you, Allison, so much for the introduction and for having me on to talk about not only native, but MaxWeb and kind of the collaboration that we've been doing for a while now. I think it'll be really educational for people watching to understand the relationship between MaxWeb and your offers and how well they perform on our native platform. So I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to talk all things MaxWeb and native, and most of all, to uh, hang out with you for the next 30, 40 minutes. So yeah, uh, I'm excited to get things going. So thanks again for having me. Of course, we're happy to have you. Um, can you tell us a little bit why it's good to work with Rev Content? Yeah, no, Rev Content obviously is a native traffic platform. Um, so what we're able to do is we have ad placements on over 45 exclusive sites that we're monetizing. And the best part about native is it doesn't need to be an us or them situation. If you're already running native with other places and you're already successful, it's really easy to replicate that success with us. If you're not currently running native, one of the things that makes RevCon a great place to start is the fact that we offer unparalleled levels of support to people that are just getting started. Um, we've got myself, we've got a team of dedicated account managers, all here to help make you successful when it comes to running native. Um, outside of the support that we offer, we also have a really easy to use platform that makes you know getting started to running ads a very quick and easy process. As you know, like most other native platforms, Rev Content is a self-serve platform, so you are able to sign up for an account, fund the account, and start running on your own. But with all of the tools and all of the resources that we have, we really encourage you to reach out, talk to me, and maybe look into getting a dedicated account manager. But right now, native traffic is a great traffic source. It's a consistent traffic source. And the best part is it works well with MaxWeb's offers. Absolutely. Yeah, we have some great offers for native. Some of our top ones are Brain Savior, Nerve Savior, Vision Hero, and Bio Restore. And all of those work so good with Rev Content and Traffic. And we have so many more. We have new offers quite frequently, and we're able to help on both sides. We're able to give you a group with a dedicated AM and several other AMs to help. And we're happy to offer weekly payments. So it definitely falls in line with you guys with customer service. Yeah, and as you know, we share many clients together and we actually set up somebody yesterday on the Vision Hero offer. So I know that performs well as the other ones. But um, to kind of you know touch on that, with you guys having a dedicated AM, with us having dedicated AMs on our end, and a lot of times we're in the same Skype group together, working collaboratively between the traffic source and the offers really helps our affiliates and our clients get that full scope of service from the initial click all the way through to the conversion on that end. So that's one of the other many reasons why MaxWeb and Rev Content work well together. Absolutely, yeah. We want to customer service all the way through. What are some reasons why some affiliates fail on native compared to others? That's a great question. Um, most of the time we see affiliates fail on native because they're coming from other traffic sources like social or paid search or other avenues where it really, you have to be very aggressive in your ad strategy because you have to grab people's attention. People aren't going to Facebook to buy something. So you really have to take them out of that zone that they're in and get them to your landing page, right? So you have to do that with you know, really aggressive clickbait type articles and headlines and ads that work to really grab their attention and pull them away from what they're currently doing. So a lot of people have that same strategy when they come into native. They think that in order to be successful in native, they have to do the same thing that they did on the other traffic source, which isn't true. And this leads to a lot of failure. With native, again, if you think about native as a traffic source, and where the placements are. Typically, they're at the bottom of an article or in the middle of an article on a page that somebody's gone to for the specific purpose of learning new information, reading articles, and following specific topics. So realistically, when you're creating your native ads, one of the ways to succeed and one of the ways that a lot of affiliates fail on native is they take that same super aggressive approach. 
when really, if you can customize your ads to have a headline that sounds more like a blog post, that reads more like a blog post, or looks like some kind of listicle, where the person reading says, oh, I'd like to learn more about that as well. That's how you're going to get people to move over in a much better fashion and increase your conversion rate on the back end. Because one of the biggest things that we see with new affiliates that are running native is the fact that they run a super aggressive ad. So their click-through rate is super high, but they're not seeing the conversion rate. And that's because they got people's attention up front, but whatever question they asked or whatever pain point they presented, they didn't follow through with that on the landing page. So the people liked what they saw in the ad. They didn't like what they saw on the landing page. So they ended up bouncing. A lot of times with those affiliates, I'll ask them what their bounce rate is. And typically it's 90, 95%. So that gives me what I need there. The other reason that people fail at native is they don't really give it adequate time, attention, or budget to test it properly and to kind of what I call crack the code to get into profitability. On Facebook, for example, you could run a campaign at $20 a day or $30 a day and potentially see some results. That's just the way that that model is set up. With native and with it being kind of a different process to get from A to B and to get optimized, it takes a little more time, it takes a little bit more budget, and it takes a little bit more patience. Like I have always joked around that media buyers and affiliates tend to be the laziest people on the face of the earth and the <laughs> greediest people on the face of the earth. And I've done it. So I, I, you know, we can smell our own there. But really, it's a combination for success because that means that they want to do the least amount of work possible and the least amount of time possible to make the most amount of money possible. So when you combine those factors together, that makes you very efficient, right? So it's just explaining to the affiliates that are coming in from those traffic sources who haven't ran native that it takes a little bit more time. And it takes a little bit more effort. And that's why we offer all of the resources that we have to really help shorten that period of time because we understand those pain points for affiliates. Outside of that, the other reason that a lot of affiliates will fail is because what they're doing is they're going to go to spy tools and they're going to rip an ad. They're going to rip the landing page. It's going to be a one for one copy. And they say, hey, this has worked well for that affiliate or that media buyer. It's going to work well for me. All I have to do is copy the exact same steps. When in all reality, while it's good to go to spy tools to kind of get inspiration to understand kind of what angles are working, by ripping it one for one, you run into the situation with native where you might be right next to them on the placement. So you could have a situation where you might have two or three of the same ads on the same placement. So what that's going to do is cause nobody to click on it because they think it's some kind of error. Right. Yeah. So it's always good to go and get inspiration, but you don't need to rip everything one for one. Now, if you're trying to get a baseline or something like I understand the process, but it's always best to use it for inspiration and not just rip it one for one and put it up. Um, It's just no one's going to win that way. You're probably not going to do as well as the original person did. And you run the risk of being paired up right next to them. And so that's one of the things that we're actively trying to coach and help our affiliates with is let's go to the spy tool. Let's look at it. Let's see kind of what angles are working. Let's take a look at it. Let's see what we can do on our end to do something that's similar, but different. So you stand out because the other reason and the last reason that affiliates fail in native is they fail to stand out from the rest. Right. And one Mm -hmm. of the things that I love about working with Max web specifically in the affiliates that you guys are sending over and that we're working with is you guys have really unique and interesting offers that aren't saturated in the market. Um, so that allows me to work with that affiliate on getting them to stand out from the rest of the pack. And that's why the vision hero offer is good. And then, um, I forget the other one that I really like that you guys had, but it's really easy on our end to help create, you know, campaigns with our affiliates that, you know, help them stand out above the rest because of the offers that we get from max web. So we're able to help them create their campaigns as far as give them inspiration, help them kind of, you know, with some different you know, kind of categories and ways of wording things, they still have to create all of it themselves, but we're there to kind of guide and consult them on some best practices with it. So there's a few reasons why affiliates fail on native. A lot of them are pretty easy to fix though. So if anybody watching has been kind of hesitant to get into native because of that, don't be afraid of failure. We're here to help you. And if you can get a great offer from MaxWeb and bring it over to us and have both of our teams helping you, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to get to profitability. Absolutely. Thank you for that. I totally agree. And we've seen it before of lots of our native pubs. And typically the most unique pages are the ones that do the best and they don't have any issues. Once you go to the spy tools and you see 30 of the same page 
of course they're not converting the cu the customer has seen them a bunch of times mm -hmm. so really and with those that. spy tools if you look at a lot of those campaigns too a lot of them have paused in the last two three weeks or a month you know mm -hmm. because they figured out that they you know they're being ripped and they're similar to everything else and so the good ones will move on to the you know the better campaign the other ones that fail will stick with that same one because it's the whole mentality of what got him there will get me there or what got her there will get her there, right? And what they don't understand is if you're not constantly putting effort into your campaigns to keep them at the level where they're profitable and you're you know, split testing and you're doing all of those things, like you need to kind of actively be working in that campaign to make sure those things are working. So yeah, I mean, it seems like common sense, but to a lot of people out there, especially the ones that are just getting started and they don't have any kind of direction or any kind of focus, you know, it can set you up for failure. And that's why with Rev Content, we understand the pain points for media buyers and our advertisers. And we're actively working on solutions and ways around them to make our advertisers successful. Absolutely. And what would you say, like your affiliates that have scaled up, how many ads are they running per day? Like how many different offers would you say? Um, it really depends. So with the newer ones that we've got, they typically start off with around two campaigns because we, you know, always recommend running a desktop campaign and a mobile campaign instead of running it all, in, you know, in inclusively of each other. Um, so starting off, we like to kind of get them out there with two campaigns, you know, one offer, um, one for mobile, one for desktop and then help them optimize and become profitable on that and then start introducing another offer, right? Because we don't want to put too much on their plate at once. If we can kind of start small, develop some profit, and then start reinvesting that profit into other offers, that's kind of the best way to do it. Now, if you're coming out there and you've got a large budget and you want to go out the gate with four or five offers, great. We will help you with all of that. But typically when people are just starting off, it's good to start with one offer split it into two campaigns, mobile and desktop, and then, you know, work on optimizing that, you know, to profitability. And then once you get profitable, then start working on another offer. Awesome. Yeah, I totally agree. The number one mistake that we see is affiliates wanting to test 10, 15 offers at once and not giving them each the full amount of testing that they need or spending enough time on creatives and they all just kind of slip through the cracks. But I think I agree with that. Two to three is like the best thing to do. Yeah. Start small, you know, learn the system, learn the traffic source you're on, get good with it, and then start scaling by saying, hey, this is what we did to get this offer profitable. Let's repeat those steps with the next offer and then work on scaling that one up. And then before you know it, you might be at five or 10 campaigns, but they're all running profitably. They're all scaled and it's a much less stressful operation that way. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about barrier to entry. Yes. So kind of going along the lines of why affiliates fail on native, um, it's those same barrier to entry points, right? Like a lot of times, you know, we're looking to get a minimum spend per day of $100 per campaign uh, on the self-service side. So while for experienced media buyers, that doesn't seem like a lot and they plan on running more than that anyway, for people coming over to Facebook or people that are newer to running traffic, that can seem like a huge barrier to entry to them because it's a lot of money to be looked mm -hmm. at. But like anybody will tell you that's ran traffic successfully, any kind of test budget is really an investment because you're either going to invest to get a return like every investment should have, or you're gaining an education. You're gaining knowledge on what works and what doesn't work. Um, I, I'm very rarely in my decade in this industry have I seen somebody come in day one and have an ROI, right? I always say like with media buying, it's you spend some money, you lose the money, you fix some things, you spend some money, you lose a little less money, you fix some things, you spend some money, you break even, fix a few more things, you spend some money, you make some money, fix a few things, and then you go spend money, and then you're making all of that money back, right? So it's a process. And patience isn't one of those things where, you know, media buyers are kind of historically known for, right? Right. Um, so that's kind of a huge barrier to entry there. The other barrier to entry that I see a lot of people have when it comes to native is not taking advantage of a lot of the options that we have in front of them, right? Again, because of budget, they're scared to kind of take a step into getting a dedicated account manager, or they're worried like, what if we 
you know, what if we run for two weeks and, you know, we lost all of our money, right? Like Mm -hmm. kind of those limiting beliefs are a huge barrier to entry to a lot of different media buyers coming in and even experienced ones too. I mean, they'll get out there, they'll get in their own head. They'll spend way too much time tweaking the campaign when they should just run it, get the data from it and optimize based on that without trying to rethink every step before they launch. Sometimes you just got to get going and then get out, optimize it, look at the data, and, you know, increase from there. Because if you spend a lot of time overanalyzing it, you're just never going to run and you're never going to make any money. So there are some barrier to entries. Like I said, patience is one of them. Budget's another one. Um, and then just getting out of their own head, you know, like with any kind of large scale media buy, when you first get out there, it can be scary, you know? Yeah, absolutely. The risk of losing a lot of money um, keeps a lot of people away. But again, like we understand those pain points for advertisers And one of the reasons that we like working with companies like yours, like with MaxWeb, is because you guys also understand those pain points, right? Everybody that's on your team has been in the industry for a while, right? They understand the ebbs and flows. They understand the, you know, the problems that affiliates are facing, right? And you guys have done your best to create offers that convert better than, you know, some other places out there. And we've done our end of making sure we have all the support, all the service, an easy to use platform to make sure that they're getting everything they need. So when you combine those two together, you're really getting a good, you know, collaboration and a good way to set people up for success. Yeah, absolutely. It's very important to us to have exclusive campaigns, campaigns that convert. Uh, All of our AMs are really, really targeted on transparency and being honest with our affiliates and letting them know what's going to work for them. And we're happy to, give around the clock assistance. We have a lot of our affiliate managers are in Europe. So we have a lot of people in different time zones and we're happy to create group chats. So me, myself, I'm an EST, but if you're in in PST, there's someone to help you after hours. There's always available help. So I think that's important. What would you say to a new affiliate, new to the space that wanted to get into native? What would be your best advice? Best advice is just to, I mean, find a good offer, right? Like work with your team over there, work with the AM that they've got at MaxWeb or whatever network they're working with and really spend some time with them and finding out not only which offer is converting the best, but which one's converting best for the other native affiliates that are out there, right? That kind of shortens the lead time. And that way it gives us the ability to say, well, we know this offer is profitable. We know it's working well on native because they have others that are working on it, right? Then I would get some baseline statistics as far as what's the typical conversion rate you're seeing on native, right? And kind of understand a lot of the data coming in. So that way we know where to kind of balance that at. You know, we know if this offer is converting for other people on native at 3%, then you should be at 3%. And that kind of gives us a goal to work for. So if we go launch and we're not getting a 3% conversion rate, we know where we need to be to kind of exceed that. And the other thing too, for new people getting into native is don't get frustrated. Don't get discouraged. Um, you know, unfortunately in today's society and through social media, we've all seen people on TikTok or people on Instagram reels that are pouting, you know, like, oh, work an hour a day, make a million dollars a year with affiliate marketing, right? Mm -hmm. Like we've all seen that and we all know, you know, that's just a scam to sell some guru course. Um, but you know, don't get discouraged. Like it takes time, you know, it's the old adage. Like if it was easy, everybody would do it. Right. Um, but as you've seen, you know, over the years, like People come, people go because it just gets too tough for some people. They let their mind get to them. So just stick with it. You know, like the one thing I love about affiliate marketing is data never lies. As long as you listen to the data and you react based on the data, you will be successful. You just have to listen to it. It might take some time, right? Might take a little extra effort, but you'll get there. So don't get discouraged, you know, when you start off, you know, make sure you give it a good month or two. Make sure you have a decent testing budget in place. So that way it doesn't become a line item and it looks at more of an investment. And the other thing too is don't be afraid of failure. Like an offer just might not work for you. It might not work on our traffic. It might not work on somebody else's traffic. There's offers that just, sometimes they just don't work. Don't be afraid to move on to another offer. You know, and that's where working with talented affiliate managers, like the ones you guys have on your team and working with the account managers that we have here and myself, They are like, we'll let you know, like, hey, maybe we should try a different offer. We've looked at your funnel. We have went through the entire thing. There's nothing technically wrong with it. Everything looks good. For some reason, it's just not converting. And knowing when to kind of make that decision, when's too soon, when's too late, and relying on the support that you get 
from your affiliate manager and from your account manager here to know when to make those decisions and when to pull the plug and then when to start over. So it's just, you know, make sure you have a budget, don't get in your own head and then, you know, stay the course. Those are my big, uh, you know, my big pieces of advice for people new getting into native. I completely agree. Thank you. What are some cool new features and benefits that Rev Content has currently? Yeah, so Rev Content's very good on, again, understanding the pain points for advertisers, understand the pain points for affiliates and kind of understanding, you know, what their needs are. And what we've noticed is per campaign, um, when you have between 10 and 20 different uh, headline and image combinations, it'll actually help you do better because it gives the system more to optimize off of. So I know that can be kind of a task to come up with all of those. So we've actually integrated well with OpenAI and we actually have a system called RevGPT where once you write one headline, you have the option to click on that and then RevGPT will give you another five to 15 headlines that you can automatically add in to your campaign. So it makes that process to get to 10 to 20 different creatives in there really simple and really easy. And what's really great is, you know, in our internal testing and whatnot, they've actually performed pretty well. So, you know, we've kind of gone and done all of that hard work for our affiliates to help them create better, you know, headlines and help them get more creatives in there so they can convert better. So I think it's a really wonderful question. Um, and it kind of leads right into why MaxWeb and RevContent work so well together because we're always pushing that envelope as far as understanding those pain points. Um, but the question that I was going to pose to you, if I might turn the tables, <laughs> is... Why do you think Max Webb's offers work so well on native? What are you guys doing on your end to keep pumping out really good offer after really good offer? So for us, we will make an optimized like landing page, especially for native that we know it's going to pass the compliancy tests that we know is going to grab the user's attention. And we're always looking at what's trending. We're always looking at what's popular and trying to create our own and try to just bring something to the space that's different, that takes that takes us to a different level, that is going to pay out well, that's going to perform, that's not going to just be an offer you run a run for a week. You're going to want to run it for a long time, and I think that's really important too because we have exclusives. They're not just going down left and right. You're able to run these for a while and really get the most out of the landing page that you made and your creatives. And you're able to just really optimize. For us, we recently implemented a trending offers tab that you're able to see what's trending and what's doing the best. For us on the AM side, we've always been able to give a lot of stats. We're able to show you what states are converting the best, what cities, what countries. We're able to give you a really good look into what's working the best. So that way we're able to suggest for your for your data and for your landing pages, what's what's gonna work the best and convert. And we're ha happy to share all that data with you. Yeah, and you actually touched on a really cool point about our partnership that I really like. Um, and one of the reasons why working with MaxWeb is so great for us is because we've had situations in the past too where you know, we've you know run into a compliancy issue with your landing pages and you guys were really quick on making the quick changes that we need to get that pushed through. Um, so it just makes a partnership so much better to have that transparency between traffic source and offer to be able to make those you know quick changes and decisions on the fly, um, which I think is fantastic because it just shows that you guys are as committed to the partnership as we are. But it also shows, uh, you know, our joint affiliates that we're working in tandem to make sure that they're successful, right? Again, it all goes back to understanding those pain points and coming up with solutions for those pain points, which, you know, having a company like MaxWeb, which is, you know, fully transparent with us, we're fully transparent with them. It really helps us to work together to make our affiliates more successful. Absolutely. I think the transparency is really key and figuring out what's going to work and being honest with the affiliate. Sometimes we'll have affiliates come to us and show us these pages they found on spy tools and we'll be honest and tell them like, there's 50 of those pages floating around. Like you should go to your manager at Rev Content. You should brainstorm something new. Look at these trending offers and we'll show them something new. We'll show them something tried and true that works. Obviously diet's always working, brain's always working. Right now tinnitus is really big. All of these things to help them scale up, help them 
really build out their business because in turn, it helps us build out our business. It all goes hand in hand. So it's, and it's nice to have these partnerships that are long lasting. We have a lot of native affiliates that have run of us for years that we've seen start with running one offer. Now they're running a hundred offers and it's awesome to see. Yeah. And one of the things that I'm excited about, which we won't go into much detail here, but I'm sure we will talk about at great lengths in the future, is we are embarking on a really awesome case study with you guys on, you know, your VSL offers. So I'm really excited to explore into that and kind of get the results out from that once we have those ready. But I'm sure it'll be, you know, like the rest of the affiliates that we've worked with, where it'll be a rousing success. Yeah, we can't wait. We're so excited. All right, that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much for joining me today. Again, this is Sean from Rev Content. We're so appreciative of our collaboration with you and we look forward to doing more business. If you guys have any questions, you can reach out to me. If you have any questions about Rev Content, you can reach out to Sean. We'll link everything below. Yep. Thank you so much, Allison. And thank you to the entire Max Web organization for all of our collaboration, both now and in the future. Um, if you want to get started, you have any questions on native, please shoot me an email. It's S-H-A-U-N at revcontent.com. So Sean at revcontent.com. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.